010106 Resource Pools, Standalone Host. Objectives. After completing this lab, you will be able to understand what is a resource pool, manage a pool's resources, create a resource pool. The objective in this course is to use standalone resource pools for single host resource policy control, and then later on we'll get more detailed into Virtual Center. So in this section, we're going to create a resource pool. And what a resource pool is, is it's a set of resources that we can either set aside or we can limit to a specific virtual server or number of virtual servers. When we're using host-based licensing and not using virtual center, our options are fairly limited and administering our ESX server actually is very simple. We're going to go over a lot of the basic functions that you'll perform an ESX server administrator in a situation where you're not using virtual center. A resource pool allows you as the administrator to divide and allocate resources to VMs and other resource pools. Resource pools are also used to delegate privileges to other users and groups. Every resource pool has a name and it's visible in the Virtual Center Inventory tab. It has associated access control and permissions. Each resource pool allows you to define reservation minimum limit maximum and share values for both CPU and memory resources. A resource pool has a parent pool and it may contain child pools or just VMs that are powered on within it. A resource pool has a parent pool and it may contain child pools or just VMs that are powered on within it. A resource pool allows you to control the aggregate CPU and memory resources of the compute resource, which is either a standalone host or a cluster of physical systems. So let's right click on our ESX server and select New Resources Pool. Now let's say we have a certain number of virtual test servers. I'm going to call this resource pool test servers and we can specify our CPU resources here. A virtual machine has three settings that affect its CPU resource allocation. CPU limit, CPU reservation, and CPU shares. CPU limit defines the maximum amount of CPU measured in megahertz that this virtual machine is allowed. CPU reservation defines the amount of CPU measured in megahertz reserved for this virtual machine when CPU contention occurs. If the virtual machine does not use the total amount of its CPU reservation, then the unused portion is available for use by other virtual machines until the virtual machine needs it. Each virtual machine is granted a number of CPU shares. The more shares a VM has, the more often it gets a time slice of the CPU when there is no CPU idle time. All the virtual CPUs, vCPUs, in a virtual machine must be scheduled at the same time. Therefore, a CPU reservation of 1000 MHz might be generous for a 1 vCPU virtual machine, but not for a 4 vCPU virtual machine, 250 MHz per vCPU. And what shares means is that the parent or the host has a certain number of processor megahertz and a certain number of memory. And notice we're in the CPU resources section here, but according to what we specify here in the shares, low, normal, or high, or even a custom value specifies how much of that resource this virtual server or virtual servers that are related to this pool will get. If we set share to high, it's going to be able to grab more memory. So if we have important servers running, accounting applications, for example, we may want to specify a high share level so that these servers running the accounting application will automatically get more resources if they are needed. More shares means that this VM will win competitions for CPU time more often. Expandable reservation. If there's more memory free, it can reserve more if needed. Limit. We can specify unlimited or we can limit the amount of memory. I'm going to set it at normal. And here, under reservation, we can reserve a specific number of megahertz for this resource pool. So if we want to guarantee that, let's say 1000 megahertz will be available, I'll just type it in here. Will be available for this resource pool, we can specify it here. Expandable reservation. Now what this means 
is it is if the host has more resources available, it can actually reserve more. But if we only want it to reserve 1,000, then we can check this box. I'm going to leave it checked. Limit. If we want to cap this resource pool off, it, let's say I'm going to uncheck unlimited. Let's say we want to give it no more than 1,500, though. We can specify it here. So now, no matter what, whatever virtual servers are in this resource pool, it's not going to use more than 1,500 megahertz. Now, memory resources. This all is being set up exactly the same way with some conditions. A virtual machine has four memory settings that affect its memory resource allocation. Available memory, memory limit, memory reservation, and memory shares. Available memory is the amount of memory given to the virtual machine at the time it was created. It is the virtual machine's maximum memory size. Memory limit defines the maximum amount of available memory that can reside in RAM. By default, available memory and memory limit are initially the same value. Memory reservation is the amount of RAM reserved for that virtual machine. Memory reservation differs from CPU reservation in that memory reserved for a virtual machine will not be donated to other virtual machines under any circumstances. If we set a reservation, it's going to guarantee that these virtual servers get that memory. Memory shares are separate from CPU shares, but are applied in the same way. A virtual machine's memory shares controls how often it wins competition for memory when memory is scarce. Virtual machines that lose must wait until memory becomes available. If the values for available memory and memory reservation defer, the VM kernel allocates a per VM swap file to cover the difference between available memory and the memory reservation. Therefore, the total memory size available to a virtual machine could consist of physical memory, whose size is determined by available memory, and swap space provided by the VM swap file. So let's create this pool here. I'll click OK, and here it is. Here's our accounting server's resource pool, and if we'd like, we can right-click on it, create a new virtual machine within this resource pool, or we can actually take an existing virtual server and drag it down into this resource pool. So now this virtual server is constrained, or it's given more power, according to the resource pool.